Hello my friends, John LaRufa here with another Rule Speed Through. And in this episode, we're gonna take a look at Imperium Horizons. Now Imperium Horizons rules will also apply for the most part to any other Imperium game you have, whether you have like the Legends or the Classics or whatever. So you'll be able to use this to learn how to play all those games. And of course, learn how to play them solo. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you have, I really do appreciate that support. Thank you very, very much. So I have this game set up right now in solo configuration, and the solo bot is going to be playing as the Egyptians, and I'm actually playing as the Martians. And the Martians have a weird setup, meaning that you can see that they actually have their advanced card up here. Um, and so just be aware that when you do the setup, you will need to make sure you refer to the rules with your specific um, race in mind. I don't remember what these call. I always call them races. But your specific civilization in mind because they may be different. Okay, so for instance, look at this. The Martians have 25 of these progress tokens to start with. All right, that's way different than usually you just get one. Or in this case, like I have the trade uh, module in here, you wouldn't get the progress token. You would get a trade good and only a trade good. Okay, you also start with three building goods and two population um, tokens as well. Now, you'll also have your draw deck. Your draw deck is going to be made up of cards that will have a symbol on the side here, but nothing else on them. And you're going to shuffle this up, and then you're going to deal yourself five cards, which is your hand limit. One, two, three, four, five. And those will be what you're going to be working from for the turn. Okay, we're just going to set those right here for now. The... Um, other thing you're going to do is that you're going to shuffle up all of your cards that have these moon symbols on there, and you're going to put them on top of the card that has the little dot, as you can see over there. And then anything with the little star on the side is your development stack, which will be set aside for now. You can't access that until you get to the dot card. You will also, in a two-player or solo game, because you set up the solo game exactly as the two-player rules say, in these in these decks over here you're going to take each of the decks you're going to deal six cards out of them put them over here if you're playing and i say over here on the on the top then you're going to deal one off the top so you're effectively going to have five of the civilization and the pre um the the like pre-modern and the modern uh decks over there and then you have your blended deck over here your main deck if you are playing with the trade uh expansion or trade module you're going to have a trade card under each of these three decks, okay? And then you will shuffle up the rest of the cards after you take two of them out and set them aside and shuffle them into your main deck. And so your main deck is going to be a combination of green, yellow, blue, um, other cards here, permanents, and some trade cards as well, okay? And you're going to shuffle all those up. And as you remember, you, every card except for land cards like this do have unrest under them. So you're always going to put an unrest card under any other column that does not contain one of these uh, yellow cards. And you may have had some cards like I did. I have a few more unrest tokens that came into my card with, or my deck that had the arrow. Those go in here as well. And then the last thing is, if you're playing with the trade, you have to put the welcome glory card in the glory deck. Then you have to take two other cards out of the glory deck and shuffle those, the rest of them together and stack them on the King of Kings card, which is going to be facing in the A, uh, on the A side up. And that is how you set up all of your cards and all of the civilization cards. Now, to set up the bot, you are going to take his, um, his civilization card and you're going to use this just to store history. You always ignore everything on here. It doesn't matter. You're not even going to score this, okay? It's just for the history. And... You're going to then take all of his um, normal cards that have, like I said, just no icon over here. You're going to shuffle them. You're going to make them into his draw deck. Then you're going to draw out, out five cards, and you're going to put the one through five tokens above those cards. And that's going to determine what the bot is going to do on its turn. And if you're playing a harder mode, and there's a lot of different modes as far as difficulty, you need to refer to the rules for changes in setup. But this is kind of like the standard difficulty, Okay. They also do have a six in there in some of the harder ones, and you can include the, the six card as well. Uh, I think it's for the harder ones. Maybe it's the easier. I can't remember. Anyway, I never play with it. I always play one through five. Then in this side of things, you're going to do exactly like you did before. You're going to shuffle the moon cards. You put them on top of this 
um, that. And then here you're going to put them in order of um, least victory point to most victory point, all right? Refer to the rules just to be sure on that one. Um, pretty sure I got that right, but then it's it's a little confusing because you got these face up and you face down. I'm not sure. So just refer to the rules. Make sure I didn't get that backwards, okay? Um, if you're playing with the Horizons version, it has a very nice uh, effect or a printed card that tells you exactly how to play the solo game. If you aren't, you're going to have to print this out, okay? Or you're going to use the, the book, the rule book, but I find it's easier to print them out and make them into little cards. And they have a side, which is the uh, underbalanced, the Barbarian Age over here, and then the developed side, okay? You flip that once the dot card comes into play, and I'll talk about that in just a second. All right, if you're also playing with the uh, Horizons version of this game, it does come with two very handy uh, player aids. I guess it's, it's both sides, but a player aid that will tell you your turn structure, how to do the cleanup, how to do reshuffling, etc., and how the game ends. And these are very handy and helpful. The other thing you're going to need to do is if you're playing with the trade, um, the trade module, you're going to have to have this table at the ready. And this table is going to tell you how the solo bot is going to interact with trade cards. And it's very important. You can't memorize this. You're just going to have to use this to do what you're looking to do. All right. So let's talk about what you can do on your turn. We're going to explain as best I can the... Um, all of my rules first, then we'll talk about his rules, then we'll talk about interactions, and then the solstice, etc. Okay? So on any, any given turn, you're going to have three action tokens, and you're going to have five or six, or maybe a different amount, depending on how, how which modules you're playing with, exhaust tokens over here, which you can use to take exhaust actions. So on your turn, you will do, choose first off one of these three things. You're either going to do an activate turn, an innovate turn, or a revolt, okay? Activate is the thing you're going to do most often. Sorry about this focus here. Activate is the thing you're going to do most often. It's where you play cards, all right? Innovate is where you're going to forfeit your whole turn in order to break through for a specific card. And then revolt is where you forfeit your whole turn to get rid of any unrest you have in the deck without having to pay those costs. Now let's talk about cards here, okay? Now, again, again, I'm, I have the Martian deck out, so you're going to see a lot of these cards in my hand right away. Usually, it's the way around where you see the red cards, but he, the Martians work in reverse. And the reason I'm showing that is because it's very important so that you look at exactly what you're playing because each the, um, the most of the learning in this game is, is knowing exactly what kind of race you're playing. And I would highly recommend that when you start this game, you begin with... Somebody very simple with like a one complexity amount, just so you get an understanding of how the game plays. And you don't jump up to something that looks cool, but is really tough. Like the Martians is a five complexity because the rules for it are so different than the main, uh, the main game. So, like I said, in the activate turn, you're going to most often use your three actions, these tokens over here, to take, to play cards, okay? And... So I could do that. I could play one of these tokens, and I like to do this. I like to flip them over to show that they're exhausted, okay? And then I will play one of these cards and do whatever it says. So, for instance, I could play this card, and it says Breakthrough for a Leaf or a, um, a Pillar card, and then put this into your history. So let's talk about what Breakthrough means. Breakthrough means that you go and you get a card of that exact type without having to take a, an Unrest card. And you can break through um, in a couple of different ways. And this is a good example of why I think it's important to keep this rulebook handy. Read these exact references to know exactly what the card's saying. So breakthrough, all right? It says, if uh, more than one suit is listed, first declare which suit you'll break through, then do one of the following. Option one, select the face-up card from the market and add it to your hand. And what you do there is you do not take that card, and then you refill it. Okay, or you can break through for any of these cards by taking the top card of the representative small deck and it's your option, or you can break through for a suit um, when the small deck is exhausted or for a blue uh, conquest card in the main deck. Okay, so again, breakthrough is good. Now, let's say you go through all those cards and you didn't find what you want, you get two progress points as compensation if it's not in there. All right. After you break through, you always will shuffle the deck 
put it back. Or if you break through for a card out here, you're gonna draw one from the appropriate deck to refill it, okay? And when you break through for a card, you put it right in your hand, all right? Now, let's talk about that. Most every time you get a card, unless it says otherwise, you are going to put that card right in your hand, okay? When it, whether you gain a card, whether you break through a card, usually it goes right to your hand. If this card says put it in, put this card into history, this is a once and done card. You're going to literally tuck it under your power card here, and you're not going to see it for the rest of the game. And so these cards that say put into history are usually pretty strong. There's other cards right here, like this, that you play and you put in your discard pile. This one says all players may draw a card, then you get to choose. You can convert one of your progress into a population per the number of land cards you have in play. And in play means that you have them out in front of you, and these are permanent cards, which I'll talk about in just a second. And then you do other things. So always take the card text exactly literally as what it says. Here, there's a card that says exhaust. So you can't play this card from your hand to do this. Instead, when you want to play a permanent card from your hand, you have to lay it down on the table as an action. And how do I know it's a permanent card? Because it has this little symbol right there. So all land cards like this you see right here, these are all permanent. So when you play them, that is your action to play that card down. And then in this case, when you do that, it says you can exile a card from the market, which means you choose any card you want and discard it out of the game. And you may garrison a card. Okay, garrisoning a card means you take a card from your hand and you tuck it under this card and it stays there out of play, so to speak or out of your cycle until, for whatever reason, you have to get your card back into your deck. And usually that's when you abandon cards. Usually. There's lots of other ways it can happen. So, again, permanent cards get played out here in front of you. Most other cards that don't have the word permanent get played into the discard pile. Okay? So, like this one, Sword of Power. This is going to go in the discard pile because it's not a permanent card. Okay? Now... <clears throat> That covers a lot of what you're going to do in the activate turn. But the other thing you could do if you are playing with the trade to, um, module is you can decide to exhaust, to choose to acquire a trade card and exile a card from the market, or to trade, or to pay three trade goods to flip this card, and then they this stays exhausted. And when you flip this card, it goes to a different version that does different things. So you could explore that. Um, if as you go. But what you're doing basically is the only way to acquire a trade card is to actually exhaust this card. Trade cards have to be up in this area over here for you to acquire them. There are ways to break through for trade, but this is not one of them. Or it says you can trade. So to trade, that's a specific action. And in doing so, you are going to do a different style thing. So when you trade, you get to do one of two things. You can either exchange a progress token for a trade token, or you can place a trade token on a, one of your cards or one of the opponent cards. When you do that, um, you get to do whatever the, the, whatever the card says. So let me go give you an example here. Those are not them. Here we go. So if you do the trade action and you play a trade token on a card, you can do commerce. And it says, in this case, place a card on the top of your deck to acquire a card in slot one or slot two of the market. But if this card already has three trade tokens on it, you cannot trade with it further. It is basically locked. Instead, if you're the owner of the card, you can take the profit action. And that is one of the things you have to do while you exhaust this merchant's card. And then you do exactly what it says. In this case, break through for a land and free play it. Once you've taken the profit action on a trade route, you then tuck it into history, okay? Or you, you put it into history, so you don't get it back, all right? And um, you can't use it again. Now, there's a lot of good information in here about the trade routes, and it tells you exactly what to do, all right? And it's really important that you read this and read it thoroughly and you understand. So look at how it says again in the profit area, it says, when you have one of those trade cards out and has three on it, no player may trade with it until the goods are removed. This is done through a profit effect, which can be triggered by the owner of the action on the card when they activate their turn. When you do this, you spend that token, you move the three. So that takes an action, okay? Um, and then you resolve the profit effect and then you place, I'm sorry, you place the, uh, pardon me, you place your trade card in your discard 
It's the bot who places the trade card in history. Pardon me on that. The bot puts it in history so it can only do it once, but you just discard it, okay? And you could play it again as an action. All right, so the bot's trade action is completely different. They are always going to trade after they've completed their entire turn. And when they're going to do that, they are going to follow this situation over here on the left. If they're a merchant or if their card is flipped in a merchant empire, they will do this. So they're going to acquire a trade card if able. If, they, if that's not in the case, then they're going to pay five trade tokens to gain the top card um, of the glory deck over here. And they'll flip to the merchant empire. So that is like basically ways for them to upgrade here. If this isn't available, they're going to resolve all profits on any card they can that they own. That means they'll do the profit action, which is over here, and it's based on whatever card they have, and then they will take that card and put it into history. And if none of these can happen, then they're going to trade, which means they're going to put down one of their tokens on one of their cards, and then here's your trade priority. They're going to put it down on the card with the most trade tokens, but fewer than three, their own card, and then when there's tied, the first available on the trade route chart above. Okay, so they will trade with you. They will tr most likely try to trade with their own first, though. And then whatever you do, what, however they trade, you do exactly what they say. You ignore the what, what is written on the card when they trade. You just do exactly what it says here, okay? There's lots to look at. You've got to use that chart. So that covers the trade action. That covers the other things you can do. Now, um, there's again, use the back of the rule book to, to know exactly what a card means when it tells you to do something like acquire or take or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, all right? Now, there's a couple other concepts we have to go over. First and foremost, always look to see what your card has over here. You may have a passive or an active skill you can use, so make sure you understand your race card um, that, or your, your uh, civilization card and what it does. At the end of your turn, um, oh, and by the way, if you have to ever pay anything, you pay it out of your bank, you can discard it, and you can always pay one of these tokens for one population or one of them for two building resources. And that should be written clearly right here. All right. Don't forget. Yes. So you could pay one to gain. Oh, and also, um, for, oh, I did mention that you can, for trade, you can discard one of those to get a trade token as a trade action. Okay. Now what happens at the end of your turn? You go to the cleanup phase, all right? So with the, what happens in the cleanup phase, you must follow this in exact order. So first of all, you add a progress token to a market card of your choice. doesn't matter which one, you just add it. Then you reset all of your um, action tokens and you reset any of your exhaust tokens that you've laid on cards. Because when you exhaust things, you're going to put this on there showing you've exhausted the card, Okay. So you get it back. You refresh it back to where it is. Then you discard any cards you want from your hand. You can just put them, you could discard all of them. You could discard none of them. And then you finally drop your hand limit of five. Sometimes you have other cards that might make it bigger. But for the most part, it's really important to cycle through your deck. And why is that? Because whenever you have to draw a card, you draw till your draw deck is empty. Once your draw deck is empty, during the reshuffle, all right, during this, this phase right here, re, uh, or during the cleanup phase, you go through the reshuffling action. So it says if you have no cards in your nation deck, which is also your draw deck, a little confusing, nation deck, all right? Uh, add the top card of the nation deck to your discard pile, okay? I'm sorry, if you have cards in your nation deck, this is the nation deck. It's, it's Ascension and nation deck. I'm sorry, this is your draw deck. You're going to add one of these to your discard, okay? And then you're going to put an exhaust token on that deck and you're doing that because you're only ever allowed to if you have no cards here to take one of these cards and discard it once per per round okay that exhaust token deprives you of an exhaust token and it prevents you um from doing that multiple times also there is a rule that says draw a card if able if you ever hear the word draw a card or the phrase draw a card if able if this draw deck is empty you do not draw a card okay but when it says draw a card, and it doesn't say if able, that's when you can do the reshuffling, um, the reshuffling action, okay? Now, the other thing is, if your card is that dot card we were talking about, you're going to flip over your state card. And at that point, all the cards 
that do not match your state card cannot be used. So for instance, I told you that this card right here, blue matches blue, that's great. Once I flip this over, blue will not match red, which is below there, and this card will effectively be um, non-usable. Now, if it's already played, it stays played. You don't bring it back out, okay? So you can still use it if it's already in play, but you can't use it if it's in your hand as an action card or whatever. In that case, your best bet is to either try to garrison it or get it into history or get it out of the rotation, all right? Once you have gone through and you flipped your state, from there on in, when you do the reshuffle, you are allowed to, if you want, buy a development card. And to buy a development card, you have to pay whatever the cost is here, like this says development cost three population tokens. You'd pay those three population tokens to the bank, and then you put this in your discard, and you'll get it again. And these are significantly better cards and very good um, for you to, to put into your deck. One of the ways the game can end is if you have developed all your cards and you then get to a point where th that deck is empty. So that triggers the end of the game, all right? Um, there's another way it can end if the main deck is empty. So if you have been, um, the way the main deck is emptied is, let's say you're going to be drawing cards for all these different things. These decks may or may not empty out, but some of them might, and you're going to fill extra cards from this main deck either from these two slots or any of these other slots that do not have any more cards in their small decks. The glory pile is an exception. If that card runs out, it'll trigger the end of the game. You also trigger the end of the game by triggering the King of Kings card or some kind of special rule that you might have in your deck that says trigger the end of the game based on your race, okay? So um, once that happens, then you complete that round, including the Solstice turn, which I'll talk, talk about in a second. And then you all play one more turn, including the Solstice, and that's it. Then the game's over. Now, let's talk about the other types of turns. That's the Activate, and that's where the beef, the, the meat and potatoes is. The Innovate, like I said, you take your entire hand of cards and you put them in your discard pile. Then you get to choose to break through for one specific thing. You're not allowed to break through for a trade card. That's not allowed, okay? That's the one thing you can't break through for. But you're going to go ahead and break through for any other type of card, any of these cards minus the trade. And you can either take them from what's revealed or you can take the top one off of the hidden deck. Okay? Again, you cannot break, uh, break through for trade. And you can take them from over here if you want to. And if you don't get anything, then you, if, for instance, I try to break through for a green card in here and there is no green card, then I get my two progress points as compensation. So that is Innovate. You take your whole turn and you do that. The final thing is Revolt. You, throughout the game, are going to get these unrest cards. And the most common way you get them is when you take this card and you did not break through, when you gain this card, if there's an unrest card below it, you're going to gain this card and that unrest card to your hand. You're going to gain both of them to your hand. And these cards are basically dud cards, and they are minus two points at the end of the game. There's two ways you can get rid of them. First, as an action, you can choose to pay one population or discard two cards from your hand or pay three resources, and you can return this to the unrest pile. Or you can decide to do a revolt turn and return any number of those, all of them most likely, that you have in your hand to that pile. And why is that a big deal? Because if anyone ever draws the final card of this deck, then you will effectively have a collapsed civilization and in the solo game, you immediately lose. And that's all you need to know. If civilization collapses in the solo game, you immediately lose. So you do not want that to ever happen. And if that pile looks like it's getting a little thin, you better spend some time getting the cards out of your deck over there. Okay? So the last thing I'm going to talk about before I teach the solo is the solstice. After you take your turn, the solo bot's going to take their turn. And then you're going to do a solstice round. And in the solstice round, the bot does nothing. Okay? but you will play any of the cards that say Solstice on them. So you're going to have some cards that are going to tell you to do something during the Solstice, and I don't even know. I don't have one available. It'll, it'll basically say Solstice. I don't think that has one. Yeah, and it'll tell you to do something, and that's when you activate them. You can activate them in any order you want, and they're supposed to be done, if you're playing multi multiplayer, simultaneously, Okay. But you basically do whatever it says to take whatever action it says, but it doesn't cost actions, all right? So you follow the card exactly. And then after you do the solo, the solstice, then you will begin another round, okay? 
So that should cover just about everything in regards to how you play. But I do want to mention some of these easy to forget rules here and in key concepts, okay? I already told you, you can spend one of the progress to either get one population or two of these building resources when you're paying a cost. Cards that are free played can never be played twice in the same round or same turn. Uh, each player may trigger the King of Kings only once per game. You may never spend actions or use exhaust effects during the solstice. You only do solstice stuff, okay? All of your variable victory point cards, which we haven't d directly talked about yet, are worth a maximum of 10 points. Those are the cards that have this little asterisk on them. He's not going to score this, but I'm just pointing it out. Those cards are worth a maximum of 10 points, no matter how many times you fulfill the condition. I told you about the breakthrough. Um, I told you about the market always containing five cards, and you immediately replace the cards as they come up. Oh, by the way, you always get whatever tokens are on the cards when you collect them. All right, those go into your available token pool. Um, if you acquire a card from Exile, you still will take a an Unrest card. So remember I told you about exiling a card where you discard a card out of here and put it off to the side. There are some limited effects that allow you to get them out of Exile, but if it's a specific type of card that isn't a land, you still have to take an Unrest with it and put it in your hand. All right? Uh, and that's about it. Okay. And don't forget again to play that one token at the end of your turn from the supply to any card you want. Now let's talk about the bot, okay? The bot will play this way every single time. The bot is going to roll a die and you're gonna put this card on the card that the bot rolls, okay? He will effectively not use this card this round. Then you're gonna flip up the card that is in the next order, whether it's you know basically all the other cards, one at a time left to right. And you're gonna look at the type of card and you're gonna do exactly what it says here. So in this case, this card is an other card because it doesn't match any of these other things. It's not unrest, it's not a trade, it's not a glory, a prosperity, this, 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 this. It's not a permanent card, so you do exactly what it says under other. You don't care about any of this. You do exactly what it says. After you do that, you flip the next card and so on. So you're always gonna be flipping these cards and following the exact rules on these spaces. If you ever <clears throat> exhaust the deck, the, the rules for the uh, bot are the same. You will, when it's time to do the reshuffle, you will add one card from this deck to its discard and then reshuffle. It only does that once per turn. It never does that multiple. Even if you try to it, it end up exhausting again for some reason, it won't do that again, okay? Um, the bot does flip its um, its card over here when they get and play that card with the circle in it. And the bot does then eventually, they don't ever pay any costs for any of these tokens that are, I'm sorry, they do, sorry. Um, what, what they'll do is they will go, they will pay, let's see, hold on. Um, they will acquire those tokens just like you and, and use them just as this card says over here. So they will acquire progress tokens, they'll acquire resources, etc., and then they'll gain and pay them based on this card over here. But when they get to those development cards, they don't pay for those. Those just go into their hand. They don't need to pay for them. They do, not into their hand, into their discard. So they get those for free, and the game will end if that gets exhausted by them also, Okay. Uh, the game will also end in all the normal conditions, all right? Just like you, just like we talked about earlier. Now, during the bot cleanup, um, so you will then, whatever card you didn't use, you're going to push that to the side, and you're going to draw cards off the draw deck, just like I said, to fill up the rest of them. And that is the only time that if it needs to draw a card, and there is no card here, it is going to put a card in from the top of its deck and do the reshuffle. That only happens then, okay? Um, so you, um, you don't do that unless you're doing it in the, the cleanup phase. It doesn't do that at any other time. All right. Um, let's see. Yeah, it says the, uh, I was going to make sure about this. Okay. It says if the bot deck is empty and you would normally add a card from the bot deck to a slot, Move the top card from the Dynasty deck to the bot's discard. Shuffle the bot discard to form a new bot deck. 
then continue adding cards to the slot. This might happen multiple times in turn, typically if a bot uh, and the bot discard pile are empty. I'm sorry. So that is a little bit different. You will you will keep doing that if it happens. I think there might be a discrepancy in one of the rule books someplace, or I might have had it backwards. But either way, you do that during the bot cleanup. All right. And that's pretty much it. Again, at the end of the bot's turn, after it's done all these things, after it does cleanup, then you will go through, um, and I'm sorry, before it does cleanup, but after it's done all these cards, you will do the merchant action for it. You will follow the steps over here, basically depending on which type of card it has, if it has the merchants up or the merchant empire. You will follow those steps and you will do it. Uh, that's it, really. The cards are very different. That's the one thing that's tough. No matter what you do, you have to be very familiar with what these actions take because every single race has a completely different feeling um, bot to play against. So I think I've covered everything. That is how you play this game. Again, when you, you end the game, you still finish the round. You play one full round afterwards, and then you add up your score. Now, when you add up your score... The bot does get a benefit from having leftover resources, um, and you want to look at these things from a standpoint of your of the scoring. It's just easier to follow the exact way that it tells you to. Um, where is it? Scoring right here. So it's going to get one point for every one of the progress, every ten population, and and every ten. Um, uh, building resource, they're going to give you one point. You can mix them together. And every five trade tokens that it has not used, uh, they I'm sorry, each trade token that is not used counts as five building tokens. Okay, so effectively for every two of these trade tokens, you have two or one point, but you do convert them. And then you score everything just like you did, except for the fact that the bot never scores this, um, and it still has the maximums. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. It never takes negative points for any cards in its history. If it says this is negative, it doesn't do that. It would take negative points for unrest cards just like you, though, however. All right. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comment sections, and I'll post it to the pinned area. This is a fantastic game. I think it's one of my top 10 um, solo games at the moment. It's just awesome. So please give it a shot. And I really hope this was helpful for you to understand how to play the game. I have uh, at least one, if not two full playthroughs on my channel of this game. And also I have several solo reviews. So if you want to see the game in action, please check it out. Check out my, uh, my older videos for those. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And as I always say, whatever you do in the future, I really hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.